Grant, Trenton State College. Greg Grant scored 2,611 points, which is a school record, and his point total is the most by any college player in the state of New Jersey. Grant set the school record for points in a game by scoring 51 points against Montclair in his first year and then broke his own record by scoring 52 points in a game against Wilmington the following year. He also holds the school record for career steals and is fourth all-time in assists, all in just three seasons at Trenton State. Grant led the Lions to an overall record of 73-15 and 15 in his career, including an incredible run during his senior season, going 30-2 and, and leading Trenton State to the NCAA Division III National Championship game, where he was named as the MVP of the Final Four. During that final campaign, Grant led the Lions to their first ever New Jersey Athletic Conference Championship. He was named as the NJAC Player of the Year for three straight seasons, first team NCAA Division III All-American in both 1988 and 1989, and was named as the NCAA Division III National Player of the Year in 1989. Ultimately, Greg Grant was named to the Trenton State Hall of Fame and was named as the greatest athlete in Trenton State College history. He was selected in the second round of the NBA draft by the Phoenix Suns. Greg Grant, Trenton State, and inductee into the class of 2023 of the Small College Basketball National Hall of Fame. Good evening. First, I would like to thank God for giving me the opportunity to be here and the strength to be in front of you all um, this evening. Also, I want to thank John and the um, Select Committee for choosing me in this honor um, as an um, Hall of Famer and Small Town Basketball um, Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank the current players who just got elected this year for the 2023 Hall of Fame. What a great honor for myself, but also for every last one of us. I would like to thank my family and friends who took their time out of their schedule to fly down here and be a part of this with me. I have my mother here with me today. I have my beautiful wife here. I have my daughter, Amber, my daughter, Jasmine. I have my three grandchildren, Olivia, Sophie, and Julian. I have my good friend, Kelly Williams. I have my good friend, Dal Young, and his wife, Robin. I also have one of my friends, Brian Caver, and his friend, Van. I have a high school teammate, Richard Wright, here today. I also have my college teammate, Jimmy Collins. And I also have my coach, um, Kevin Bagley, is here with me as well. My nephew, Queese, my aunt, Tammy, my cousin, Brooklyn, is also here today. And my college teammate, Greg Moore, is also here. Um, this has been a journey. I think um, the, only, the, only, the, the only thing next will be the NBA Hall of Fame. I know I'm not getting that. So this, this is it for me as far as the Hall of Fame. I mean, ran out high school, college, Mercer County, and now this. But it's, it's a great honor. Also, some of the family members that I know that I'm up there in my heart and they would love to be here is my, my other sons, James, Austin, and Ryan. My one son here today is Tavian. He's a 17 year old senior going off to college next year. I'm so glad he's here to experience this as well. I got three sisters, Tanya, Tracy, and Tiffany, and my two brothers, um, Andrew and um, Albert. My other two grandchildren are, are now here as well. That's Elias and Wyatt. And I have two son-in-laws, Ira, and one of my son-in-laws here today is Normie. But anytime you receive an honor like this, there are so many people that play a role in it. And, and that journey is a long road, but my teammates have played a very important part of it. And my coach, Kevin Bannon, means the world to me. Without him, my pro career and my college career will have not got started. My wife is the driving force of my family. She met me after my career. And I always tell people I was the best player on every team that I played for. I was always the captain on every team that I played for except the NBA. And right now, I'm not the best player on my team. My wife is the best player on the team. And I get to play the role guy and, and just play my role and, and keep winning. And that's what we do with this family. Not having any scholarship offers 
Um, coming out of high school was very difficult for me. I had, a, I had a really good high school career, and not to have anybody thought I was good enough to play college was a, a real tough, tough part of my life. But again, I was strong enough to go down to Atlanta Marsh Brown and, and give it a shot anyway. And I did. I did make that team as a walk-on, and I started for like five games before I decided to leave and come home. Coming home, I was just homesick. My grandfather had passed away in 84. So that kind of gave me an excuse to, to get back home as well. So um, then again, like I, I said earlier, I had a baby, which my daughter Anne was here at 19. At that point, your life changes a little bit. You know, I don't, I don't know how to be a father. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready to be a father, but I knew I wanted to be a better father than my father was to me. And even though basketball was my dream and I wanted to always play in the NBA, I just knew at that point in my life that could not happen. So I took on a job and tried to do the best I can to support her. So taking on that job, I would, I would work at that fish store from 7 o'clock to 3 or 4 o'clock and run home every day, play some basketball, run to go see her. And my mom lived about 3 or 4 miles. From, the, um, from where I grew up at. So I would run three miles to her house as well, just to get back, um, to, to do it over again every day. So I did that for about a year and a half. And then like I said, Coach Bannon came and grabbed me up, got me back in school, and that's when my life started to change. Sleeping on the floors in college for teammates, because I didn't have room and board. My financial aid only covered my classes. So I slept on the floor every night, find a find a spot. When I couldn't sleep on the floor, I would run the five miles back home, pack my book bag, get some rest, and then run five miles back to school the next morning to go to class. I did that for three years. Never had a room, never had a meal plan. One of my friends, they just did a video thing about me and said, the day you got drafted, even though you was going to the NBA, you still was trying to borrow my meal card to eat. <laughs> So the, the journey was definitely hard and definitely tough, but I love my teammates. Like I said, I was a, a fierce leader, a fierce fighter. Didn't want anybody to beat me in anything. You're not ever going to beat me in the sprint. You're never going to outwork me in practice. Never. And I knew once I got to Trenton State and got that second chance, I was going to the NBA. I was going to the NBA. And because that was my dream all the time is to get there. Um, and and it's a funny story, I'm going to say it real quick. My friend Darryl Young is here. Um, as kids, we, we grew up on Walnut Avenue. And we called ourselves the Walnut 76ers. And I was Mo Cheeks. He was Darryl Dawkins, and we had the other players on there. And my uncle wore number 10. Um, and that's who I looked up to, so I wore number 10 for him. But also Mo Cheeks was one of my favorite players. So to make a long story short, this is how God works in your life. Not only did I not play for the Walnut 76ers, I played for the Philadelphia 76ers. And not only did I play for the Sixers, I also got a chance to play on the same team with Maurice Cheeks with the New York Knicks. That's a little boy dreaming that one day something can happen and then it happens because of dedication, hard work, and belief that you can do anything you set your mind through. I know every player that has been um, selected to the Hall of Fame has come up through a whole lot rough times for me because they was born in, in a different time than I was. So I can imagine the struggle and the commitment and the hard work that they had to go through. And you don't get here without some sacrifice, without giving up something. And before I close, I just want to say one of my favorite gospel songs is by Marvin Sack. Never could have made it. And let me, let me hang. It says, never, never would have made it, never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all, but now I see you were there for me. And I can say, never would have made it, never could have made it without you. I'm stronger, mom, I'm stronger. Kevin Bannon, I'm stronger. Daryl Young, I'm stronger. Amber, Amber, I'm stronger. Jasmine, I'm stronger. Nephew Queese, I'm stronger. Kelly Williams, I'm stronger. Brian Kibber, I'm stronger. 
all of this would not have been made without you. When I look back over all the things you brought me through, I can see now that I, I had to hold on to you. And I want to thank God, and I want to thank John again and the committee for selecting me. I've been blessed. I love everybody. I love my teammates. I love Kevin Bannon. Coach B, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You took a, took a little boy that gave up on his dreams and gave him a little boost to say, nah, you're different, Greg. You're special. You're not going to be a playground legend. You're better than that. You're better than that. And I took that, I took those words and said, you're right. Let's take this ride and look where we are today. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Love you all.